Hello, welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret. My name is Heather. Today is Masterclass Monday. Yay, again. Where are these weeks going? It's fantastic and scary at the same time. Today we are talking all about lifestyle engineering and I'm so excited to be able to share with you our latest masterclass on www.confidencethroughcabaret. So in this session, we'll be talking all about the wonderful lifestyle engineering masterclass that Kelly Lupton did for us. She's an amazing guest and a friend of our community and we are so honored that she's done this masterclass for us. So for those of you that are new here, our website, www.confidencethroughcabaret.com has just launched in the last, actually it's a month today. It's exciting. And we have a lot of masterclasses, bonuses. We have workshops coming up. And for each of the masterclasses, we develop a workbook that goes alongside because we really believe that when you're listening to um, someone else's content or you're watching their slides or or you're or you're kind of following along in in your own way then it's it's not going to go inside as well as if you were to take the time to fill in a workbook to reflect I mean I love taking my notes and I love having them but I never go back to them and so the idea is that with masterclasses, we work through a workbook and we work through exercises for ourselves so that the, the information really goes in and means something for our lives and makes changes for our confidence. So Confidence Through Cabaret is all about personal life, work life and stage life. And today I would say that lifestyle engineering is very much, well, it applies to all of our life, but I would say in particular it applies to our personal life because when we think about engineering and and designing and building then it's so important that we have the lifestyle that we want to have and so of course that would include work and of course that would include the ways that we show up on our stage wherever our stage is um, and but it is very much about lifestyle and it is very much about you know starting with what it is that we want that's that's aligned to us and that that really makes us feel passionate and so when we shared this interview with Kelly Lupton, or when she shared it with us, I should really be saying, she told us all about the importance of being honest with ourselves and the importance of recognizing when we have our feelings that are wonderful and our feelings that are not so wonderful. And the fact that we need to honor all of those feelings and you know everything in between the highs and the lows. So, Let's have a listen to a clip. So lying to yourself, this is something that we all do because our brains are little brats. They are, they are like little toddlers. That, that's the best way that I can explain it to you because they lie to you and they're convincing. Have you ever had a toddler lie to you? They're convincing and they will build upon their story in order to convince you that their, their, their story is the truth. It is like unreal. Um, and they're and, and, but our brains are even more convincing because it's our own voice and it sounds so factual. Um, I have a client right now that we're working on her time management issues and her skills. Um, and, and she keeps coming back to me and going, well, I tried your method and well, it didn't work and I'm just not good at time management. Okay, well, wait a minute, time out. Not being good at time management, that's just your thought. That, that you can totally change. So it's like just trying to go through the little steps of going, I'm not good at time management too, I can manage my time effectively and even understand that, hey, there are some things that are beyond my control and that's okay. So it's about being honest with ourselves. And you know, I have been through a lot of times in my own personal life where I've wanted to, you know, kind of avoid those, those feelings that, that aren't good and to really, you know, kind of seek out the good feelings and really to just, to just look for, you know, where can I find a, another place where I can feel good? What else can I be doing that would feel good and avoid all of the things that I didn't want to face up to. And I think, I would have said that I wasn't lying to myself. I would have said that I was, you know, living life to the fullest and being optimistic. And that is true to a point. But if we're not 
allowing ourselves to go through those difficult times and the times when we don't feel good, then we don't get through them. We kind of stop them and then bury them or express them in some other way that isn't necessarily healthy for us. And so I love what Kelly's talking about with our brains and how we, how we can, can construct things that are effectively lying to ourselves. Um, and, and the fact that we do need to, to face how we feel and just let it feel and just let it go because it'll pass. Do you know, I, I always say that in an exercise class, I always think, okay, I'm not gonna make it. I don't wanna do this. This is really hard. And then I think, oh yeah, but it's gonna end. And I'm gonna be glad I did it. And it's the same kind of thing, although on a much more serious note, it is the same kind of thing with feelings. It's like, oh, this is really hard. I don't like this feeling. And then we can release it and we can let it go. And then we don't have to relive it over and over. So Kelly also shared with us in Lifestyle Engineering, um, an analogy that I love, and um, she, she did come with a caution about environmentalists don't love this, but it's not a literal, it's just a really great um, explanation of our need to kind of clear ourselves. And this week we are going to be talking about, you know, clearing space for ourselves. So we've been talking about, you know, really aligning our values. We've been talking about our mindset and we've been talking about our goals. But in order to really open up and drive towards those goals, we have to clear some space sometimes. So let's have a listen to what Kelly says about that. And when you're talking about this, it, I like to look at it kind of like as a river. Like if we look at the picture here, it's got the rapids and you know that the rapids are caused by rocks, right? So rocks are obstacles to how that river flows. And environmentalists are going to hate me on this one, but it's just, I'm not actually going and removing natural objects from rivers, but you know. <laughs> so please don't, don't attack me from an environmental standpoint. Um, but when we think about it, okay, so right now, when you start out, your brain is in turmoil. It's like 50 million directions all at once. You don't know what the underlying thoughts are. So when you start looking at it and you look just below the surface, you're like, oh, there's these rocks here. So I'm going to pick this one up and I'm going to examine it and I'm going to work on it. And oh, well, I don't like that rock. So I'm going to put it someplace else. You know, I'm going to put it on the bank of the river. I'm going to put it in a truck and haul it someplace, or I'm going to put it into something where somebody else can use it. Okay. And then eventually you get enough rocks down and the water level goes down and it's a little smoother, but there's still rocks underneath. So we pick up a few more and we just keep going and doing it. Um, so eventually you get better flow, you get clearer water, which means that your thoughts are moving in the direction you want to go. They are clearer, you understand them better, and that you understand yourself better because, well, every relationship you have always starts with that relationship with yourself. Yeah, I love that analogy of, you know, the rapids, you know, it's the water crashing against the rocks. And, you know, I've never really thought about it before, but I think that the obvious solution, at least for our own feelings and our own, you know, kind of getting to, to clear waters, is really about examining what is it that, that is causing the crashes? You know, what are those big rocks? And very often it's about our own beliefs about ourselves. Very often it's about the limitations that we set on ourselves. And very often it's about the things that we avoid or the, or the, the things that we, you know, kind of choose not to look at. Um, back to that. So, um, you know, when we think about Kelly's analogy of, you know, kind of picking up the rock and thinking, where else could this serve me? Maybe this doesn't serve me here. Maybe this doesn't serve me right now. Maybe it's something that I need to put over here for another time. Or as Kelly said, give that to someone else that could use or, or that it would serve. Um, but it is, you know, I, I love that analogy of, you know, kind of picking up that rock and saying, what is this about? How does this serve me? If it doesn't, what would be the best thing to do with this? How is the best way to deal with this? And then moving it and then getting deeper into the waters until the waters are more clear and still. And I think that's such a beautiful analogy. Um, you know, I, I think obviously you wouldn't do that in a real river, but I think that's, that's such a, a great way. And I 
I'm going to take some time this week and we'll be talking, as I said before, we'll be talking a lot about, um, you know, mindset and self-limiting beliefs. So we have a great podcast coming up on Wednesday with our dear, dear friend Geneva, uh, who will be talking all about um, you know, inner alignment and, and, and is a, as she calls herself, warrior coach. So you can check that out on Podbean or anywhere you get your podcasts at Confidence Through Cabaret. But Geneva's talking about, you know, kind of living in that space of fear. And I, I have done that. I have been in that space of fear before. Um, and so I'll be sharing more about that. Um, I think for, for today and what I'll be working on this week from Kelly's masterclass is really examining what are those rocks? You know, what are the really big ones? And then what are some of the smaller ones? Um, I shared with you uh, last week that my mother had passed away um, very recently this, this year, we're in, in January still. And, um, and I have some big rocks <laughs> that I need to, to, to work through. Um, but I know that when I lift those big rocks and examine what's underneath, there will be, you know, some smaller things to think about, for example, some of the, the patterns that I have inherited or, or had um, connected with, um, you know, in, in growing up. Um, and I think, you know, this particular point in my life is, is a, a very obvious time, but I think that it's worth doing you know, it's not, it's not worth it. We don't wait until something happens and then examine it. We, we need to examine it along the way. And I'm not talking about constantly, you know, picking up little pebbles in our life, you know, all the time, but I'm saying sort of not, not being afraid to look at what's under the water and not being afraid to lift it up and, and, and consider how is this serving me or is it not? So to this week, this is what I'll be doing is, is looking at, at, what those rocks are and how do they serve me? And is it time to, to move those onto the shore or somewhere else? And is it time that I need to deal with some of those and acknowledge them and let them go in some way? I would love for you to join me for this week. So tomorrow we have uh, a personal life and we'll be talking about self-beliefs. And then Thursday, we'll also be talking about self-beliefs in terms of you know what limits us in our work and in our careers. And then on Fridays, of course, uh, self-care, focus on you. And I'm so excited to be launching this masterclass with Kelly for today. Uh, and I'm so excited for you to see it on our website. And, and, and do join us for the podcast on Wednesday as well. I'll be here with my friend Ryan and we'll be talking about, you know, what it, what it means for each of us when when we think about our fears and when we think about alignment so share with us this week come back like and subscribe below all the socials are confidence through cabaret with the exception of twitter which is at yb yws and clubhouse which is heather at yb yw sorry at heather yb yw yes uh, and the yb yw yes as always stands for it's your body it's your world and it's your stage Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.